Hello everyone, I am blessed and highly favored to see another day all glory, praise, and honor be to my Father God who is the head of my life and I pray that you have him ahead of your life as well. Now with that being said, what I am going to be speaking about is God faithfulness. So let's go ahead and jump into this reading of the word. Reading out of the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13 says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful. If we are faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself. And I'm reading out of the ESV version, English Standard Version. All right, read out of the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Amen. All right, let's jump in the study section of all right. 2 Timothy 2.13, Jesus will faithfully stay by our sides, even when our endurance seems to run out and we doubt our own faith. We may be faithless at times, but Jesus promised to be with us always. Jesus promised to be with us always to the very end of the age. Jesus will never turn his back on us, even though we may turn our backs on him, for he cannot deny his own nature of love, mercy, and compassion. I would never deny Jesus, not for no gold, silver, a hundred billion dollars, or mansion, whatever. I would never deny Jesus for none of that. Amen. Jesus will never turn his back on us. Glory, hallelujah. Now, let's jump in the study section of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19. The Bible counsels that we should trust God everywhere in all things. Trust God everywhere in all things, in good times and bad. In good times and the bad. When you got money in your pocket or when your pockets are empty, trust God. Amen. Beneath sunny skies and thunderclouds when our pockets are full and when they are empty. How does trust work? Number one, trust overcomes fear. Genuine trust in God says whatever mess I'm in, my heavenly father will lead me. Number two, trust overcomes depression. Trust overcomes depression no matter how overwhelming the situation or how disheartened it makes us feel, God can draw us back to the light. Number three, trust overcomes hate. Trust overcomes hate. When careless or cruel people hurt us, sometimes irreparably, yeah, irreparably, we can hate them forever or we can trust God. We can hate them forever. Or we can trust God. Amen. But we can't do both. God is here to study even the worst situations. Always with a promise. Always with hope. Commit your life to him. Don't commit your life to the world. Commit your life to God. Because the world will use you up and twist you you know, inside out. And turn you inside out like a shirt. The world don't care for you. Trust me. Commit your life to him for safekeeping. Rely on him when you face your worst circumstances. Amen. Now reading out of the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3. But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And that's the devil. Because the devil is a stupid dumb clown. Amen. Now, reading out of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, 
No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of an escape that you may be able to endure it. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. God is faithful. <laughs> and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Amen. Now, let's jump in the study section of uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. Beneath the surface of the routine of daily life, invisible spiritual powers are raging a fierce struggle. Our main defense is prayer that God will protect us from the evil one and strengthen us. He will strengthen us. Amen. Philippians 4, 13. I could do all things in Christ who strengthens me. That's my favorite verse. Amen. Let's say uh, our main defense is prayer that God will protect us from the evil one and strengthen us. And the note there for yeah, information on our armor for spiritual warfare. The following guidelines can help you prepare for and survive Satan attacks. They say, take the threat of, number one, take the threat of spiritual attacks seriously. Number two, pray for strength and help from God. Number three, study the Bible to recognize Satan's style and tactics. Number four, memorize scripture. Memorize scripture so it will be a source of help no matter where you are. Number five, spend much of your time with those who speak the truth. So that you will recognize the truth and be held accountable to it. And number six, practice what you are taught by sound spiritual leaders. Amen. I'm going to read it again. Number one, take the threat of spiritual attacks seriously. Number two, pray for strength and help from God. Number three, study the Bible to recognize Satan's style and tactics. Number four, Memorize scripture so it will be a source of help no matter where you are. Number five, spend much of your time with those who speak the truth. Those who speak the truth. Amen. So that you will recognize the truth and be held accountable to it. And number six, practice what you are taught by sound spiritual leaders. Amen. Now let's jump in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10 verse 13. And what it says is in a culture filled with moral depravity and sin indulging pressures. In a culture filled with moral depravity and sin inducing pressures. Paul encouraged the Corinthians regarding temptation. He said that number one, everyone faces temptation. So don't feel like you've been singled out. Number two, others have resisted temptation and so can you. And number three, any temptation can be resisted because God will show you a way to resist it. God will help you resist temptation by helping you. Number one, recognize the people and situation that you give, I mean, the situation that give you trouble. Number two, run from any Thing you know is run, wrong. Run from anything that you know that is wrong. You got to run from it. Choose to do only what is right. Number four, pray for God's help. And number five, seek friends or church leaders who love God and can offer help when you are tempted. Running from a tempted situation is your first step on the way to victory. Amen. Running from a tempted situation is your first step on the way to victory. Victory, yeah. Show that stupid devil what's up and keep your foot on his throat at all times. God, 365, nonstop, just peace, music, ENT ministries. I love y'all. Y'all have a blessed week and amazing weekend.